Okay, so this was from last time, I think. You still remember Black's uh, right move, don't you? Let's see, very quickly. Just see if everybody remembers. What did Vaganyan play in this position? 30 seconds. Aha, Sprite Paul. You got it. Hong Pao, you also remembered. Great. Savham, Robo. All right. You're very fast. Mega Charts Rex also. L008. Don't hang that rook, Adi Chess. Don't hang that rook. It's important. Eric, you found it. L008, Pikachu. A lot of people remember. That's great. That's good news. Uh huh. So, what was the right move here, uh, Sprite Paul? What should Black play here? So, the move was Queen 8 to protect the rook and activate the queen. Exactly, to activate the queen. You're completely right. We're playing on the king side. That's where the action is, of course. And uh, yeah, Black had a good game and it was later a draw. All right, nice. Uh, today's topic is Gambit play, okay? Gambit play. I think it's a very interesting topic. We're speaking, of, of course, about the opening. That's clear to everyone. And um, let's see if we can uh, bring up some examples. In the first place, I wanted to speak very quickly about gambits in general. So let's see here. Uh, no, I'm not sp going to speak ab about Evans' gambit. I don't think so, really. No. <coughs> Sorry, maybe at some later occasion. Um, let's speak very quickly about gambits. I mean, we're speaking about giving up a pawn. Why are we giving up a pawn? Well, um, let's check one gambit here. Let's say we play the, the Smith Mora gambit, right? Uh, this is not so popular, but let's use it an an, as an example. So, c3. White gives up a pawn, d takes, knight takes e3. Why on earth did we do that? Well, I mean, those who play the Mora Gambit, probably they play like this because they like the fact that they have an open c file and an open d file to work on, right? That's one typical case. Please notice there are some kind of, how can I say, pseudo Gambits, like the Queen's Gambit. In the Queen's Gambit, just for, the, for general knowledge, White usually doesn't Gambit that pawn, do they? There are usually they get back the pawn very quickly if black takes it. Um, there are many ways to get back the pawn. I would say in the queen's gambit accepted, very rarely white uh, remains a pawn down. Almost always they pick it up some way, right? With e3 or maybe knight f3 first. Very, very rarely black sticks to that pawn. But there are many other gambits where, in fact, the material relation is altered from the, from the very beginning. So it's not even a gambit, says Guinea Pig. Yeah, that's also a sprite pawn. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you would have to be really stubborn to defend this pawn. I, I know there are some ideas with b5 and bishop a6 and so on, but we should probably doesn't take it so uh, so seriously. Yeah, the Stafford Gambit is interesting also. <coughs> uh -huh. So I, I would like to say that in general terms, we have two situations here. One where the, the opening is a Gambit as such. It's already a Gambit. I mean, we spoke about the, the Mora... Gambit, for example, d4. This in, it's, in itself, it's already Gambit. It has a name, or, or we can say the King's Gambit. It also has a name. But there are many other occasions where you actually Gambit a bit later. You sack a pawn a bit later uh, in order to uh, get initiative and so on. But still, I think it's important to understand this space feature. I mean, if we speak about the Mora Gambit, we're saying that White would like to profit from the C file. If you speak about the Benko Gambit, for example, if you speak about the Benko Gambit, it's clear that black, if white takes on b5, black would like to profit from, from this open uh, a and b files later on. So very often space is involved in this whole idea of, of gambiting, right? In some cases, you can, of course, say we gambit in order to speed up development. But on other occasions, it's in order to gain space. Now, if we speak about gambits also, you should notice that once your opponent gambits upon you can usually choose between accepting or declining, right? And there are no concrete rules for that. But there are different situations. So in some cases, you should definitely accept the gambit. Uh, let's say you play the Dutch with the black pieces. If white plays e4 here, I'm pretty sure that you have to accept, right? If anybody can come up with another move, which is not e f takes e4, please let me know. But as far as I know, this is the only way you can actually react to, to this uh, gambit. 
knight c3, knight f6, or d5, maybe. I'm not an expert on this uh, on this opening, but as far as I know, once they play against you, this gambit, you simply have to, to accept. There is no other choice. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, please, uh, in the chat, uh, please, uh, no bad words and uh, so on. Please uh, stick to the topic, okay? Uh, we have other gambits. No, <laughs> the Grob gambit says L008. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. G4, D5, Bishop G2, Bishop takes G4. Yeah, this is probably you should be, oh, sorry, you should be a little uh, careful here if they play like this. Aha, uh -huh, I, I know what you mean. There are some pitfalls here. Um, I, I mean, th let's not move into it too much, but I think I would prefer to play something like C6 here if it's, if it's not uh, too boring for you. I mean, you have the same situation in the in this. This is also, but it's not even a gambit, but it's similar, no? Same same fashion. Anyway, what I wanted to say is that in some gambits you must you must accept, right? Like we were saying here. Here you must accept with black. If you have the case of the Budapest gambit, for example, please let me know if there is another move which is not D takes E5. I I don't know another move which is possible here uh, for. For white. Yeah, don't play d5, Pikachu. This is not uh, Benoni, no? I mean, bishop c5 and uh, black is perhaps already better in this position. Maybe you can play e3, but I mean, then I can play perhaps take and play d5. You're playing the French uh, exchange variation, not very threatening, I think, to, to black. So some gambits you just have to accept. But there are other gambits where you just have to decline. That's also good to know. If you have this gambit, for example, um, how do I get to this gambit? Uh, c4 c6 maybe you have run into this gambit and here i'm pretty sure you must not accept it's a bad idea to take this pawn everybody knows this is a bad idea because white ends up with a big uh, weakness on d4 and black would play e5 so this is a typical case where you don't uh, take the pawn so you would play here after c6 you would play d4 and you transpose to the oh sprite pot says i have done this with white yeah uh, i think me too you shouldn't do that and i mean here in this case it's interesting, no? In this position, we're now in the Panov. Panov. Uh, here, if black plays g6, you have the, the other situation. Actually, here, black is forcing white to somehow... I mean, black is gambiting a pawn. White should play here queen b3. This is the only way to get an advantage, and black should gambit this pawn. If white doesn't play like this, they might not have an advantage. Okay, Mega, R Mega Charles Rex also says that you cannot accept the... Vienna gambit. And I think you're right. Yeah, it, it's impossible to take here unless you want to end up in a complete uh, misery, of course. Aha, you cannot do that. Everybody present here knows that black must play d5 here. A anybody knows this, right? So it's interesting to notice, no? You have different reactions in different cases. Sometimes you should not even think about accepting the gambit. And sometimes it's the best thing that you can do. And we have some other situations like midterm situations. If we go back again, Sorry if I bring up again the Mora Gambit, but it's so easy to, to play out. It's already on move two. Here you can see, you can ask different people. Some people will say to you, D takes E3 is the best choice. And they will say, here, you can play with this setup. Or you can play that setup and you get a big advantage or whatever. Some people will say, don't do it. Just play D3 and you will get an easy game with black, some kind of dragon. And some other people will probably say, you can play Knight F6 and you will transpose to the Alapin, right? You can play the Alapin now. So what I'm trying to say here is simply that you have different choices when you want to meet the gambit, okay? You can meet them in different ways. You can accept, you can decline, you can, you can give back the pawn later, which is very typical, like we were seeing here, the case of playing d3, for example. Or if you like, we can also, just to, start, to finish this, if we look into the Benko gambit, I think this is one of the best examples, because here there are many ways in which white doesn't accept the gambit, right? Some people will probably say to you that, okay, you have to take the pawn in order to get an advantage. But other people will say, hey, I know this variation, f3, it's very powerful to play like this. Some other people will say, play e3. Uh, actually, this is a very interesting variation as well. Uh, some people will say queen c2 and so on. And some people will say, take the pawn, take the pawn. That's the only way to get an advantage. But other people will say, you should just give away the pawn, play b6. So this is, in, in a way, it's the same thing as we did in the Sicilian... Um, uh, Mora Gambit when you played here d3. You just give away the, the pawn, right? So wouldn't black just be a little better in the Mora? I don't think black is better. Maybe white is a little better here, Robo, in this case. I think white has chances for an advantage. I think you can play something like this. You end up in a, in a better... Um, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but there is some plan like this. You try to restrict uh, black uh, uh, in, in some kind of hedgehog structure. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting uh, question, yeah. But I mean, the thing that we're saying here with giving away the pawn like this in, in the Benko, please notice that this method of giving away the pawn, it's extremely useful. Imagine, for example, that somebody plays this against you. Play like this, right? They play this Black Mardimor Gambit, they play f3. I don't know what you have prepared here. Oh, Traxler, sorry, I don't know the name of this opening. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, Traxler, Dimar, Traxler, Gambit, whatever. I'd play e3 here. Correct me if this is a bad move, but I like it because I deny them of knight f3. So maybe they take here and I bring out the bishop and I play some kind of, of Karo Khan. Um, all right. I think that's what I wanted to talk about in this uh, introduction. Yeah, some gambits you have to accept. Somebody was saying, I think, you have this gambit in the in the uh, Petrov, right? Knight takes. Yeah, you better accept this gambit, right? King takes and d4. This is big fun, at least for quick games. Oh, Egmo is sending me a whole game. Okay, I see what you mean, Egmo. That gambit is very interesting. I, I know the game, gambit that you're speaking about. I think you could have a whole class just uh, about that gambit, bishop c5. Maybe we can look at your game uh, someday. They took with a knight here in their game, Egmo, but I'm pretty sure that white should take with the bishop, right? If I'm not uh, misinformed. And you should play something like bishop d5 or d4, something like that. Uh, is it this move? I'm at a loss here. Honestly, I'm not. I'm at a loss. I only know that if I'm playing this, I am not supposed to take with the knight. I should take with the bishop. <coughs> okay. So, I think, guys, that's enough for an introduction. Uh, we can speak about a lot of uh, different gambits, but uh, let's uh, get going now. I want you to, to talk also. I want you to uh, put some effort into this. So, let's start with just one position. I would like you to, to have a look at this following position, and I want you to uh, find White's best move. So, here, please notice in this game played a few years ago, we can clearly see that white uh, has sacrificed a pawn. But they're very happy that they have landed a knight on e6. Black cannot castle long, of course, but also short castling is impossible. I'll give you for this mission uh, two minutes. So please think about this position. Yeah, we can speak about more gambits. Yeah, Eric's gambit and well, a lot of gambits, but uh, let's uh, get going, okay? So here you're playing with the white pieces. Uh, there is only one way to a clear advantage. Let's see if you can find this. It's not so simple, I would say. So I'll give you two minutes. Um, try to find a way in which you can get a huge advantage with white here. Um, it's a very pretty solution, I would say. But okay, depending on your way of uh, defining pretty. All right, white to play and get a huge advantage. It's a very deep idea, so please focus, concentrate. Don't send me the move in 10 seconds. Uh, spend time on this, okay? Good luck, everyone. Oh, you got the right move, Charles uh, Hua. The second move is, is difficult. Half a point for Eric. That's an interesting move. It's probably the second best move. I'm afraid L008, that won't uh, work out well. It looks nice, but uh, I don't really trust it. Um, interesting idea, Aditya. You can play like that, but... Um, I don't think it's the most promising idea. Uh -huh. So, Sprite Ball also, I could almost give you half a point, because uh, that's a very logical idea, and, and it will give White some advantage. Oh, a lot of people want to play like that. Interesting. So, you got the first move, but you didn't get the second move. I guess the second move is a dif difficult one. So, Guinea Pig, Robo, Pikachu, Adi Chess... Awesome, Owen, you're on the right track, as you can see. But remember what we spoke about some time ago, flexibility. Look for flexibility in your attacking play. Okay? Look for flexibility. Those knights have a lot of different uh, destinies. Maybe we shouldn't commit them already. So, Egmo and Heavy, the hero, you were very close also. But nobody's able to find the second move. Oh, Henry Arsord also, you're very close. Uh, what was what is the subject? Sorry, I was late getting like yeah. The subject today is gambit play. Uh huh. All right. Uh, what do you want me to do here? Uh, should I do this again? Because nobody got a, got it right, but many people got the first move. So maybe I should uh, do it again. Okay, we'll do it again. Um, please notice that flexibility is key in this case. 
also one reminder when we play gambits very often we end up ahead in development it's, it's easy to see here that blacks lagging in development maybe that might also be important here okay i'll do this again i'll give you one minute uh, 30 this time only so we will reduce the time so, so let's see who can find this take your time guys take your time very pretty solution and the georgian grandmaster he duly found it in the game okay henry arsold congratulations you got it subham you also got it nice good work oh that's a funny move l008 <laughs> You have a lot of imagination. Interesting. Aha, Egmo plays the same move, but at move two. Okay. Interesting, uh, Egmo. I think if you play like that, I play queen f6, I think, uh, Egmo. So I can go with my king to f7. I think that was my idea here. But I'm not completely sure. Um, what else? We have only two winners. But we will have to talk with some people who are taking that pawn second time like added chess Charles who are guinea pig yeah we'll see all right tactical magician yeah we looked at that i think uh-huh well we will look at it oh all right so far two winners uh, please remember okay three winners mega charles rex please remember that white is much better off in development black has difficulties uh bringing out the pieces so you should exploit the situation and uh, yeah Use your pieces in a smart way. Okay, you got it, uh, Sprite Ball, also. Great work. So we have five winners here. Henry Arsold, Subham, Mega Swords Rex, Sprite Ball, and Hong Pao also got it. Yeah. Nice. All right. Time's up. Yeah, Heavy the Hero. Yeah. Not just something. <laughs> it's a, it, that's an important move. Yeah. All right. Uh, Henry Arsold, you were the fastest one. So please go ahead and explain to everybody what you have found. Audio, please. Uh, microphone. It does not work. Okay. I'll ask uh, Subham then. Okay, Subham. You're playing with the white pieces. I'll just go back one move. All right. Wait, can you hear me? Sure, sure. Please go uh, ahead. Uh, first, I said Bishop G5. Uh, but I guess first try, I got. I put Knight takes G5. Aha, uh -huh, right now. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's knight? what. Well, knight F. Well, I said knight F takes G five the first try. Aha, uh -huh. uh, in interesting. No, yeah. very, very logical. I guess I'd play no. queen, queen F six here. Is that so? I guess then I still can play the rook C one. But I had bishop H six coming up, yeah. right? Maybe. May I, I'm not completely convinced, but I, I guess I could try can this. I, can I and take on C six? Aha! Uh -huh. You pick up my queen, but I get some. Do I get some material here or or? I get very little material. What's going on here? You're going to play knight c7? Yeah, knight c7. Aha, uh -huh, I'll take. So it's... Yeah, I guess. I mean, I have a few pieces yeah. for the queen, right? So it's it's not yeah. completely co convincing, I think, this yeah. variation. Aha, uh -huh, but then you I, you thought again, right? Yeah, I don't follow it then, yeah. I kind of saw rook c1 and I like didn't see uh -huh. a move for him. Sorry, I'll, I'll give you back the pawn. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, I said rook a c1. And yeah. That's a beautiful yeah, move, isn't, isn't yeah. it? No real way black can defend against rook takes yeah. c6. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. very difficult. Uh, let's see what happened in the game. In the game, they played here the move queen f6. And you can probably imagine how they continued. Yeah, it's not very difficult. Aha, uh -huh, we just take, exactly. Black uh, had to take back. They're happy that their king can escape, but still... White has a very strong grip in this position. Um, here you have different moves. It's not so easy to, to pick a move just like that. But uh, let me tell you that what they played in the game was the strongest one. They played here knight e5. Check. I think I cannot take on e6, right? I think I'm getting mated then in, in two moves, if I'm not mistaken. So they had to play in the game king g8. And uh, yeah, of course, you can see their next move, right? Somehow you can see White's next move in the game. That's not difficult. You get back the piece and... Uh, yeah, with a winning advantage. Aha, Mega Charles Rex, L008. Everybody finds it. Yeah, exactly, 97. They later on picked up this uh, bishop and they went on to win the game. So I think this is very, very pretty 
way of playing. Uh, not so easy to see from the very beginning. One problem is that we have so many different options, right? In this position, there are so many different th things that we can do. Some people were saying here the move h4, and I think this is the second best move because in this way you're preparing to go bishop f4. What I have looked at here is that I should play g4 and after bishop f4. Here, black should do something that we should always take into consideration when we are facing a gambit, and that's giving back material. So I think what black should play here, or what they have to play here, I mean, the, the queen is about to take on b7, right, if I move the rook. So we should just take on f3. And as you can see here, uh, bishop takes queen g6. Black is vacating the square f7 to the king, and they also have some of their own threats. So, I mean, white can take, and black can take back. Uh, probably white is still a bit better here, but it's not 100% uh, clear. No, Black has a stronghold on d5 and so on. But uh, that would give you half a point if you played h4. It's a very reasonable move. And uh, what else? I don't know. If, would you like to check some other variations? That's fine, no? Bishop takes, uh, f takes. Some people were saying rook e5. Very interesting move. Uh, preparing to go rook takes e5 and rook d8 check and all this. However, I can play here the move queen f6. This is a very good technique. You give your king a flight square on f7. So I think that uh, white is, uh, black is still alive here. After f takes d5, you can also try knight takes d6. That's what we were looking at with uh, uh, Southam recently. Anything else you would like to look at? Else, I think we will uh, continue. So the, the solution, like we were saying, we take with the bishop. But, I mean, apart from, again, you, we have to do this again? Really? Then I'll do it just in like uh, 20 seconds if, if you need to do this again. Okay, we'll do it again. Yeah, yeah. Learning in chessable fashion. We are repeating everything that we see so that we remember it forever, right? That's what we're doing here. So uh, I will torture you here with the whole variation. All right. So I'll give you for this mission only one minute to see if you remember what we have just seen. All right. Here we go. All right, L008, first place, Egmo, second place, Subham, third place, Hong Pao, fourth, Eric, F, fifth, Sprite Ball, sixth, Mega Charge, Rex, seventh, Google Chess, eighth. Henry Arsor, there was some confusion there at move five. Uh, Santos, you got it, Charles Hua, Hank, Aditea. All right, so a lot of people found this one. Nice. Maybe we should already stop at this point. Or Royale, you got it also. Very, very nice. Aha. Uh -huh. Pikachu and so on. Yeah, most people got it. That's great. Um, you learn very quickly. Remember, chessable, great place to learn chess, uh, as is also chess dojo, by the way. Maybe I should check that video by Kostya. No, Kostya has a video about the Stafford Gambit. I think I will have to check that Gambit to, to see what it's it's about. I don't really know how to, to handle it, actually, with, with white pieces. All right, nice work. So let's continue. I wanted to tell you also that if we add a pawn, if we add a pawn here to the to the to this position, let me show you something. I made a little experiment here, and I added a pawn uh, to this position. Let's see uh, courses. Let's see very quickly. I made this little experiment. I put a pawn on c5. Uh, anyone, what do you think is White's best move now? White is now has a, got back the pawn. So maybe two questions. Do you think this favors White? And what do you think White should play? You can just answer me in the chat. Uh, do you think it favors White? And uh, what do you think White should play? Aha, okay, okay. You got it. Exactly. Uh, most people understood this. Yeah, the right move here is, uh, is H4. It doesn't favor White, actually. It, it doesn't favor White. The engine evaluation... It's almost half of, half of the previous one. The previous one is like plus four. Now it's plus two or something like that. You're completely right. Now h4 is the right move. So as to prepare bishop f4. Of course, it would be madness to take on g5 now because we cannot use the c file anymore. So it's funny that actually if you get put back a pawn on the board, it would actually help black in this case. And that uh, goes back to what we were saying. Once you gambit the pawn, very often you can work on that file. Yeah, please stop spam spamming. I'm about to set this to private chat. I thought today you could enjoy the public chat, but then you will have to to chat reasonable things, not uh, spamming. All right. Now I would like to, to bring up uh, another little exercise, and then we will have a look at the complete 
game. That was my uh, plan today. So let's bring up another very interesting position on this topic. And actually, the game that I will show you, it's in my uh, it's my book in my book about um, opening strategy. So if you by chance uh, if you have seen this book, maybe you will um, recall this example. And if you don't, no problem. So here you're playing with the white pieces. As you can see, right now we are a pawn down, but we have a very nice advantage in development. So I will just ask you for the first move here. I, I won't ask you for a lot of moves. I only want to know one move, okay? I'll just ask you for one move. I try to find white's most promising move in this game, right? Hong Pao, you also got it. Excellent. I see what you mean, Subham L008 and Mega Charles Rex. Uh, that's in the right spirit of the position, but I guess I could take it. No? Uh, okay, those of you who let me castle, if you let me castle, you should think again, right? If you let me castle, probably that will help me a great deal. So try to prevent my castles. All right, so let's uh, listen to L008. Uh, all right, L008, you're up. What to play with white? Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't get the correct answer. That was probably someone else. Oh, you didn't? Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I looked wrong. Sorry. Uh, my apologies. Uh, Hong Pao, sorry. Uh, Hong Pao, we will listen to, to you now. All right. Um, so I played queen a3, just stopping black from castling. That's right. And what else do you have in mind here, Hong Pao? Or did you consider some variation? I mean, let's say I play something like, I just bring out the bishop, try to take that knight. Did you think of something else here? Or what? There, mi there might be some weird bishop e7, knight d6, or just knight b6 ideas. Exactly, you got it. Th that's a funny situation, right? The black queen is kind of overloaded to the defense of the e7 pawn and the b6 square. So you're you're completely right. You can play here knight b6 and you win the exchange and most probably you win the game also. So that's a nice little tactical uh, touch. Aha, uh -huh. great. And I guess there is not so much else. Uh, let me ask you something else here, uh, Hong Pao. If I play the move uh, bishop uh, f6, I mean, this is a typical idea in some... Um, Grunfeld variations. What would white play, of course, here? Yeah, not difficult, uh, Hong Pao. It's a very simple question. Yeah, exactly. So, and tactically, uh, yeah, I can't do this. Do this. I, I lose the game. So, yeah, thanks, Hong Pao. Great work. No real way for black to uh, to progress here. Okay, but first, before we continue with the game, let's check the other moves here. People are saying bishop g4. Well, that's a high price uh, to pay, don't you think? I mean, I'll take. You take here. I guess I play knight d7. Okay, no, you can give check on d6, but I don't die because you give that check, right? Or what? Uh, king e7? How is king e7? I don't understand. I'm reading the chat now, but there is no king e7, is there? Oh, okay, I see. Um, so that's too violent. No, Bishop g4, too much talent uh, if you play this move. Uh, don't uh, give away a piece like that. Try to see if there is a smarter way of keeping up the pressure. And since black is very happy to castle, I mean, 95 is a, is a typical move, of course, here. In other positions of this kind, this might be the best move. But here I'm happy to castle. So uh, try to look for, uh, for annoying moves for your opponent, right? I don't know which other move. D5, people were saying also, D5. So D5, I mean, I like the spirit of this move. Just give away the the, the exchange so as to get control of the open diagonal and so on. But uh, I don't have any reason to take, right? I mean, I would take on D5. Those of you who said D5, um, <coughs> what did you have in mind? Because I'm ready to castle now. So I don't get D5 100%. I'm pretty sure the best move is what the Hong Pao is saying. I'm pretty sure the best move here is to play Queen A3. By the way, who got Queen A3? Henry Arsold, Hong Pao, Guinea Pig, Heavy the Hero, and Sprite Pot. So we had five winners on this move. I don't know. Rook 81, a lot of people were saying, okay, I mean, I like your move. It's nice. But is it as, a, as effective as Queen A3? I'm not convinced. I think this is still, I mean, everyday situation. If you play the Grunfeld, you snatch a pawn and then you 
you try to defend. So um, I'm pretty sure that the best move is what what uh, we heard here, Queen A3. Now let's have a look at what happened in the game. In the game, Black said, "Okay, I'm in deep trouble. Knight B6 is coming up. I better defend this pawn. I cannot do it by Bishop F6, so I'll do it by Bishop." F8. All right, that's a horrible move to play. Of course, nobody likes to go back with the pieces in this way. But uh, okay, they didn't see any other way to play. It's your move. I'll think I'll only ask you, or should I ask you for a little variation? Okay, I'll ask you for a little variation. Now you will have to focus a little more. I'll give you for this mission uh, one minute and thirty. I think that will be enough for you. Okay, one minute thirty. White is about to win this game. Please exploit your tactical possibilities in the best possible way. Take your time, guys. Take your time. Don't send me the move now. Uh, send me in one minute, okay? Okay, Henry Arsold, great work. You were successful again, and you're the first one again. Very nice. Interesting move, uh, Santos. Maybe I can play B5 there? Is B5? L008, maybe B5 is possible for black? Adi chess, that's an interesting move. Did you check A5? Uh, Adi chess? A, uh, sorry, E5? E5? Did you check that move? Interesting, no. Okay, Eric, F2008, you got it also. Nice. Royale, oh, yeah, interesting move also. But maybe not 100% related to, to the position, yeah. Uh, Royal Tactical Magician and Mega Charles Rex. You're playing a very classical style here. I like the move, of course, but I'm pretty sure there is something better. So we have so far three winners here. Uh, Savham, you got the right idea, but badly executed, or maybe not. We will come back to you, Sav Savham. That's a very interesting move. I, I don't understand at this point what happens. Nobody else said that. Wow. That's a move that, please remind me, we have to look at your move because it's very interesting. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. A lot of interesting moves uh, from everybody here. But uh, let's listen to Eric F., who will explain to us the most powerful way of playing with the white here. Okay, Eric, you're on. So I played d5 because I want to play queen c3 and cons control the a1 um, to h8 diagonal. Sure. And you then, can play it out if you like. And then after, uh -huh. um, and then after c takes, then you can go... Queen c3, and then you're checking sure. the rook, and now you're threatening um, knight d6, check, and then you win c8. Exactly. I mean, I have to play either rook g8 or f6, but I'm pretty sure it will end up and then, the same. Yeah, and now knight d6, and if you take um, e takes d6, you win f6. Exactly. You, you win the... Well, you win the exchange here, right? Yeah, and then you win so, the exchange. Sure. Just for the record, if I play rook g8 instead... Uh, then it's a different situation, right? Um, you can still play ninety six track. Exactly, you can still play ninety six. I think it's even better here, actually, in, in this case, because uh, yeah, now Black is forced to take with the queen. Now, of course, because the pawn is pinned, and then yeah, this is just a dreadful for for Black. Exactly, we just take on c eight, and we take on b seven, and, and so and we win the game. So great work, uh, Eric. Thanks. Let's go back now and let's have a look at some other alternatives because. We had this very interesting variation by, I think it was Sabham who said 96 right now. So can we refute uh, Sabham somehow here? I mean, I understand your idea, right? You want to play queen c3. This looks excellent. Or what am I missing here? You know what? I think black should probably do what we were discussing. Uh, give away material. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's time to play something like knight c6 here. Or, or, or you think this is madness? I thought I should perhaps cast along here. So I'll... I'll well, or, or maybe it's, it's indeed madness. I don't know. What do you think? How many pawns do I have? I have two pawns, right? So I play something like bishop... Uh, bishop e6, maybe. Madness! <laughs> okay. Thanks for, for your support, uh, Robo. Yeah, probably it's, it's not working, no? Uh, I'm, I'm still in trouble. You, you will work on the C and B file, you mean, if I cast all? Is that what's going to happen here? Probably the list of evil, says Sprite Paul. Yeah, but what do I play? Uh, I, I mean, th this is a weird idea. I could play like this, maybe. Try to swap the exchange of queens. It, th does that help me? But I mean, it costs also a pawn. But at least I'm able to swap queens. But still, white should be much better here, right? Or what do you think? Looks very promising for white, doesn't it? Queen takes b7, queen takes 
This is drawable, says Sprightful. Yeah, maybe, no. But still, white has the bishop. Uh, F6, king F7, says Eric. When is that, Eric? When should we play F6? You mean when they play... Oh, here you mean. Oh, you like this for black? Oh, I see what you mean. In queen C6, something like that. Maybe we can still save this. Yeah, maybe. You, maybe you're right. Maybe this is the least of evils. Aha. So I guess uh, that's... Robo says good for white. Um... So what uh, what do you think, guys? Maybe this is still better for black than in the game. I'm pretty sure it is, you know, because I saw the game. We can go back to the game now. We can see what happened in the game. In the game, they played, yeah, like we were saying, d5, like Eric explained, this is very logical. Please try to notice what happens after each move from your opponent. When black plays bishop f8, of course, this is simple logics. Something must happen on the long diagonal. They just retreated the bishop from there. So d5 is very logical. So... Pawn takes, queen c3, that's how the game went, just like Eric predicted. Knight e6, queen takes d6. Let's see if I can bring up the notation here. Um, they took on c8. Uh, king f7 was played in the game. And here we had... No, it's not the same line. Or is it the same line? Oh, we just transposed them. <laughs> okay. So then I'm at a loss. Then I'm at a loss. If, if it's the same thing, then for sure, uh, we should also give... Uh, Points to Subham who, or whoever who said Queen C3. If, if this just transposes, I guess it does, right? It just transposes. So if it just transposes, well, uh, he also deserves uh, a point for this. So to be honest, I how was how was their variation? Knight E6, Queen takes Queen C3. To be honest, I I would go for my idea then. I would just give up the. I'll play something like this, and I will suffer a little here. I'll play h5 then. Okay, I'll suffer. I'll play h5. I try to survive here somehow with the black pieces. Queen e5 is my next move here, probably. So, I think this is still uh, savable for, for black. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we should compare always uh, the different variations. So, it's more forcing to play uh, queen c3 first, right? It's more forcing to play queen c3. We don't... Uh, give up. Now it's not the same thing, right? If they take, this is just horrible for black because now white can also work on the d-file, I guess. And also the knight is not developed and so on. Anyway, back to the back to business here, back to the game. They played in the game queen c3, that was f6, knight e6 check, we already know the pattern here. It takes, bishop takes f6 was the idea. Qu queen takes d6, they took on c8, king f7, so time for you to play here. I'll only ask you for, I think, for one... Uh, for one move? No, for two moves, I'll, I'll ask you here. Yeah, two moves. Uh, you will have only for this uh, 55 seconds. Why to play? It's time to finish off black. You're right, tactical magician. Finally, our magician woke up and found it's a solution in five seconds. Eric, good work. Um, yeah, most people want to play like that. Uh, I can give you half a point, but try to find the, the most forcing way. Aditya, I think you got it also. Nice work. Aha. Yeah, um, you can probably win the exchange here in a smart way, but uh, that's not what we wanted, or what, or is it? Yeah, you can probably win the exchange. I guess that was you're saying, right? L008. So the the Ukrainian grandmaster he he noticed he noticed that he could win the exchange, but he noticed also that he could go for even more, which is a typical situation when you're attacking, right? So, Tactical Magician, Eric, Aditya, L008, Hong Pao, Awesome Owen, Royal, Hank, and Robo, you all got it. Tactical Magician, you were the first one here. What would you play with white? So, uh, a bit, uh, I'll play Bishop B5. In... Why? Why? So, the idea is that when, when you take on B6, b7 you want to prevent queen c6 exactly and uh -huh. you're also threatening some checks on e8 yeah maybe we have it in the pocket right at some moment yeah. uh, it might be interesting aha you got it they played in the game well what did they play in the game they played bishop g7 g7 but now you can just take and then there's no knight d7 because so i think you're you're winning a piece here right you're yeah winning a piece probably you're winning yeah, a piece aha something like that yeah, so here they in the game they played rook d8, but it's already a desperation. Queen takes, they played queen b4, um, but yeah, black is beyond the solution, uh, salvation already. Rook b1 was played in the game, queen takes, the bishop came back, and as you can see, the knight is is uh, lost. So 
Yeah, here they put a last little trap. What would you play here, uh, tactical magician? <laughs> yeah, not so difficult, no? Just to avoid any calculation. Or you can win in different ways, right? But uh, the most simple choice, what would it be? Aha, everybody is screaming the same move here. Yeah, G3, exactly. I guess you can also take first and then play G3, but this is even simpler. So here, black resigned. Okay, now back to what we were discussing. What happens if you play queen B7 straight away? Uh, where are we here? So people were saying queen takes. I guess I'll play queen C6. And you wanted to play bishop A6? Is that the idea? Or did you have some other idea? Those of you who were saying queen... Uh, Queen takes b7. Anyone? What did you look at? Spriteful says bishop a6 was my idea. Okay. So I guess I'll have to take on... Well, I, ha I have to give back the change here. So which is the best way to give back the change? Maybe I should play bishop g7. Is that so? So you get an exchange like this, right? So how is the material? Are you completely sure this is the best uh, shot for... Black for white. Maybe I can play, I don't know, knight. Where should the knight go? To b4, maybe? You're a piece up? Who is a piece up? I don't I don't follow. Nobody's a piece up. Are they? No. Oh, please let me know. Uh, I mean, okay, here, my, my point with knight b4 is that I need to protect the pawn, right? That's why I put it there. I know that if a3, I'm, I can play rook b8. So uh, I guess white should have to take now. Or am I missing something? Rook b1. But then I can play maybe... A5? I don't know if this is working for black. Uh, I mean, you will have to take on A8 sooner or later. We have this position. Does black have chances of saving this or? Maybe not so much, no? Yeah, no, it's, it's difficult. Too many open files and so on. Pawns on both flanks. But still, everything is relative. So this is one good option for white, but even stronger, of course, what uh, we had just explained by tactical magician. Bishop E5 must be the best move here because you're winning a piece, I think, by, by playing in this way. You're not winning the exchange, you're winning a piece. Aha. As long as it wins, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Judith Polgar who said, once I see a mate, uh, I don't look for anything else. So that's that's a good thing to keep in mind. Summing up what we have seen here in this... Uh, Guinea pig, want to say something? You raised your hand? Please uh, share with us whatever you have on your mind. Else I'll just continue. So what, what we have seen here is that white sacked the pawn. We can clearly see that they have a lot of compensation. The black king is still in the center. And that explains why we should play queen a3. Not letting them cast off. So in the game, black had a very difficult position. I don't know, honestly, what should black play here. I don't know what, what to do. Uh, we have this threat of knight b6, like Hong Pao was explaining. They played bishop f8, but that's a dreadful move, of course. And after the very nice continuation... Maybe we, sh we should rather play this out? Yeah, I think I we should ask for this, all of this. I'll ask you for all of this so that I make sure that you actually remember it, okay? I'll play out all the moves. So we'll see if everybody uh, remembers this. We'll do this in chessable fashion. Um, or I was in the restroom. Yeah, I'm sorry, but um, you can try. I'm sure you can find it anyway, okay? I'm pretty sure you can find it. Yeah, I think we can stop at this point. All right. All right, Eric, Hongpao, Royal, Spriteball, Tactical Magician, Santos, Aditea, you all got it. I should have put less time, of course. Um, Subham and L008, I think you mixed it up with the move order. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Kwaki, you got it also. Good work. Aha, uh -huh. Robo and Mega Shots Rex. Okay, if you like to go for that uh, middle game with the extra change, that's fine. All right, uh, Pikachu, interesting variation. I didn't think of that move. Bishop g3. I play queen d7, uh, Pikachu. What do you have on your mind there? Queen d7, I think, and I'm alive. Well, I think so. Aha. Uh -huh. Awesome. Owen, you also got it. Excellent. All right, maybe we can break there. No, I think most people, they already uh, sent the, the right solution. So I'll, I'll break here. Next, uh, let's bring up a game uh, where we will have a look at... Who is sending this message? Uh, you're the biggest loser. Uh, yeah, Robo, please. Uh, watch your language. No, uh, it's not a nice, uh, things to, nice thing to write. Let's have a look at a very interesting game. 
it's uh, not a famous game, and that's also partly why I chose it, because I didn't want you to, to know about this game. Um, let's see if I can bring it up. So here we are. This is a game with the white pieces. Um, I think it's a Danish uh, international master, Christensen, or maybe Norwegian. I'm not completely sure. And playing black is Jan Kelevich, who is uh, international master or even grandmaster from Germany. This game was played last year. It's a very interesting game. It, it, it will show us how we can use the idea of using a gambit, uh, not from the very beginning, but at the later stage of the opening. So this game starts like this. We will look at it from Black's perspective because it's Black who will gambit and it's Black who will win this game. Perhaps some of you play the King's Indian with the Black pieces. In that case, you will feel just at home in this game. They played here the variation with F4. The, I don't know, how do you say this in English? The fourth pawn variation? or Four pawns variation, maybe? That's the name. Uh, very interesting way to face the King's Indian. Slightly risky, I would say, but uh, perfectly reasonable. So black can play in four pawns attack. Okay, thanks, uh, L008. Great. So the four, four pawn attack, very interesting choice. I would say, I, I think it's better against the peers, actually, against the Yugoslav defense, where the point is still on C2. But still, I think it's, of course, important to know about this. Here, black played in the game C5. And the normal way here to continue with white is D5. And actually, in this way, we transpose to the Benoni, right? We would end up in the Benoni, castles, knight f3, e6, a typical variation in the Benoni. I think black is theoretically okay here, but of course, it's, it's very disputed, and you can play this with both colors. However, in this game, they played here D takes C5. And this also exists. What most people play here, uh, I think the most theoretical move here is queen a5. You know this trick? Pawn takes and you play knight takes c4 and yeah, the pawn on the knight on c3 is in the air and so on. So usually what white plays here, they play bishop d3, development, they protect this pawn, black takes on c5, white plays something like queen e2, after knight c6, white plays knight f3, and later on they will play something like bishop e3 and they will cast all that. I think it's still kind of disputed, this, this position, uh, anything can happen. However, in this game, black said, it's time to gambit. It's time to gambit. After d takes e5, they played well. What do you think, guys? Anybody? Can you imagine what the black played here? Exactly, it's bright ball. You got it. Yeah, L008 and so on. Southam. Aha. They just cast all the way. I must say I was impressed the first time I saw this game. Uh, it looks like they're just giving away the pawn, but it's actually very, very powerful, this gambit. Isn't it queen a5? No, they won't play queen a5 uh, kugel chess in this case. This is the typical move, of course. It's what you you will find if you check the database. It's what most people play here. Yeah, I, I know. Nobody will take, of course. That's madness to take. You, you lose the uh, right to castle and you bury your bishop. Of course, that's not the idea. But queen a5 is the typical antidote in this kind of situation. But like I'm saying, white will play bishop d3, queen e2, knight f3, and the normal game for, for white. However, in this game, the German Grandmaster, he just castles. Very, very nice concept, because after the move, c takes d6, e takes d6. Anybody, can you see what is white's problem here? Aha, the e-file, the king, and the pawn on e4. So it's easy to see that this pawn will, will be a target for the black pieces. So in the game, white didn't play... Uh, they didn't dare to take the pawn here. They played in the game knight f3. So they play here knight f3. And I will ask you for the next move here. Try to find the most powerful move for black. Uh, I will only ask you for one move, okay? But uh, try to make sure it's the most powerful move. Uh, I think by sheer logic you can find this move. Uh, okay, one minute. Uh, please notice if you play queen a5, you just transpose to what we were saying. I'll play bishop d3, and I'm pretty sure we will transpose. I like uh, the spirit uh, of your move, uh, Eric, but I think you can improve it in an even more powerful way. Okay, Kugel chess, we have a winner. I'm happy that somebody uh, found a move. Uh -huh. uh, Subham, you're very close, but I think you shouldn't uh, gambit that pawn. You know which pawn I'm referring to, right? Henry Arsord, that will come later. That's too violent. Uh, keep that one for later, okay? Remember my words, you will use this move later. 
L008, interesting choice, but um, why not develop the other pieces? Mega Charles Rex, that's very inventive. Uh, you might use that one later. Okay. So, uh, Google Chess and Hong Pao, you are the two winners here. Google Chess, uh, please shoot. Uh, share with us. What have you found? Um, I think that, 96. Aha, uh -huh, why? Um, so, like, if four <laughs> takes and then I take, I have to. So, oh, um, yeah. Aha, uh -huh, and what will happen next? Um, I have the e file open. Yeah, I mean, you had the e file. Uh, yeah, you have the e file, sure. But apart from that, I mean, if I play just something like Bishop D3, uh, what move could you consider here? Um, I think I could stop one from Castle. Aha. Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry. Uh, th maybe I should not uh, dwell into that. No, I mean, uh, if I just play some random move, like, uh, yeah, what, what could I play here? Some random move, like, yeah, who knows? Queen C2. Uh, what happens with this knight, uh, Google Chess? Oh, um, well, it... Exactly. Yeah, thanks. The great work, uh, Google Chess. So, everybody <laughs> understands what uh, Google Chess is explaining. We would very much like to bring this knight to c5. So, if you put it on d7, like some people were saying, unfortunately, we will give away the pawn on, on d6. And then I think white can even get, I mean, it's not so much about the pawn. It's about the fact that white is able to play e5. And then it's more difficult for black to prove their compensation. And on the other hand, if you put a knight on c6, well, I mean, I can probably take. And uh, after that, I can bring out the bishop and, yeah, try to develop <coughs> somehow. I mean, the knight is not badly placed on c6, but it's even better placed on c5. So... Well, many people were saying queen a5. I understand what you mean, but I would play, I, yeah, I told you, no, bishop d3 and queen e2, and this is still just transposing to what we have just seen. So strongest move here is what the Kugel Chess and Hong Pao are explaining, uh, knight a6. Is c takes c6 possible? When? Oh, after queen. No, I don't think it's possible. You cannot play like that. You mean like this? I don't think so. This is bad for, for white. They are probably regretting by now that they played f4. Yeah, don't play like this, please. Uh, white will. White is in ruins here. Yeah, so... No, you, you never take that pawn, really. So, knight a6, very nice move, very pretty move. This is the whole explanation of uh, why they played like this with, with c5 and castles. Let me tell you that sometimes you can pick up one specific idea in different openings. So, if we go back to the very beginning, let me tell you that in the... In the Pierce defense, you have this variation. Um, F4, I mean, it's not, it's not a very common variation, but there are some people who play like this. So they want to build like, like a big chain and maybe later on play E5. It's funny, but actually you can play in exactly the same way here. I mean, I think that knight C3 is the, is the best move. Just play the Austrian attack. But if they play C3, actually you can play in the very same idea. Uh, anyone, what you, would you play with black here? If you just want to copy the idea from the game, what would you play? Aha, you're right. You're right, uh, Google Chess, Eric, L008, and so on. Yeah, you can play C5. Very interesting. And even the engine is happy to play this with black. Exactly the same idea. We're copying the same idea from the game. Aha. <laughs> so that's how you play this with black. You don't take, of course. Then they play E5, and again, your bishop is restricted. So uh, funny idea. Knight A6, pawn takes, pawn takes. And you can be sure that white is suffering here. Um, it's difficult for them to keep everything under control. All right, let's continue with the game. Let's go back to the game. We had arrived here. Uh, yeah, please stop uh, with this uh, spamming and, and so on. Uh, Queen B... No, sorry, where are we? Bishop D3 was played in the game. Let's go back a little. We had this nice move. Uh, knight A6, and after C takes D6, E takes D6. Yeah, the E file was cleared, and the knight can come to C5. White played at this moment, I think, Bishop D3. And, uh, yeah, it's your move. I'll only ask you for one move. I'll give you 40 seconds for that. What's the black play now? Which is the most powerful move here? Remember from last game, Google Chess, you got it, nice. Remember from last game what white did, no? What did they do in the, in the game? The first move of the previous example, what did they do? Okay, Eric, Hank, you got it. 
great work you mega charge rex robo all right don't let me castle you remember from the last example they played queen a3 they prevented black from castling here we are again the same story okay good work uh, robo hong pao pikachu tactical magician you got it nice a lot of people found it that's how you should play the opening try to punish your opponent may i talk uh, we will go in order robo i'll go strictly into order uh, those who haven't talked and so on hank you're on what would you play with black here No answer from Hank. Maybe there is no microphone. So I'll continue. Mega Charge uh, Rex, please go ahead. What would you play with uh, uh, Black here? I'd play Queen B6 just to stop White from Castling. All right. I'll play Queen E2 then. So I'm, I mean, I'm just about to play Bishop E3, right? Did you consider that? Uh, actually, I didn't. Uh, but. Okay, don't worry. I'll, thanks, uh, Mega Charles Rex. I'll ask this one uh, as a next quiz here. I'll ask this one as a next quiz. Don't don't worry, don't worry. So let's see who can find the next one. I'll give you one minute. Please use some tactical tricks if you want to solve this one. There is a nice tactical trick here. I'm pretty sure you have seen it in other games. You can use it here. So, who has the sharpest tactical eye? Oh, you take that pawn, really? I guess I can take back Adi Chess and Tactical Magician. I take back and I play Bishop E3 at some point. Aditya, I think I just play H3 against your move. I don't know what you're threatening there. So, who, who has the sharpest tactical eye? I want to play Bishop E3 next turn. Find a very tactical way. In okay, Subham, you were very close. Robo, you got it. Okay, Robo, you will finally talk on this one. Yeah, it's time for Robo to to talk on this one. Heavy the hero, you got it. Nice, Eric F, you got it as well. Great work. So tactics is always around, right? Tactics is around when we are about to punish our opponent. All right, uh, where is uh, Robo? Please go ahead, Robo. What to play with uh, Black here? So we do knight c5. Aha, uh -huh. and if I play bishop e3? Queen b2. Exactly. So you must have seen this trick, all of you. This is very important to, to, to know this trick. It appears in some openings. Well, in some openings more than others, no? But it's, it's a very, very nice uh, trick to, to have in mind. I saw it recently in, in that uh, Olympiad, maybe? But some game, or, or maybe it was a European online championship so very nice idea and actually there aren't so many good moves for black please notice that if you play for white i mean if you play the other way around i escape no i escape here i can play i can probably castle here and i have bishop d4 coming up just in case so i'm, I'm alive here and uh, what else to do with white here yeah we can look at the game i, I don't think there is any any other move here some people say knight g4 but okay i'll just play h3 some people want to take on e4 Patience, patience. You will do this later, but not now. I can take with the knight, probably. I don't know what you're looking for here. Careful, I can also play for cheap tactics, no? So it's not so clear. Knight c5, very pretty move. We're taking advantage of the fact that the queen is actually overloaded to the d3 and b2 points if white plays bishop e3. All right, white played in the game, rook b1. Our next move is not difficult. Anyone? Oh, instead of queen a2, what if white plays knight a4? Okay, okay, okay. I'll, of course, answer to that. Knight a4 says, heavy the hero, what should black play here? Well, what would we play? Queen c6 says, Eric, nice. I don't even have to think here. I can just copy your comments. Yeah, good good move, Queen c6, attacking the pawn. You're right. And also, I mean, if the knight goes back, uh, we can just play knight c5. And what else to play with white? Oh, I thought first queen e2, then queen e4. But... No, but queen e2, then I can always play queen check and you have to go back. I mean, here at least the knight was defended, right? So this is not so nice for white, I think. Uh, yeah, you cannot play queen e2 because you're dropping the knight. So I guess knight a4 is impossible. Let me tell you that the position is already difficult for white. I mean, I, I checked this also. Uh, I listened to Stockfish and uh, it's hard for, for white to defend here, actually, in this, uh, in this position. But this move is important. All right. I mean, queen b6. Let's continue. 
So they played in the game Queen e2, that was knight c5, like uh, Robo explained to us. White had to play here the move rook, BA, rook b1, a little sad move to play. Uh, anyone, what would you play with black? Uh, I won't ask you for this move uh, because it's so simple. By simple logics, what would you play? Knight g4. Oh, I understand what you want to play. You want to take and play queen f2, something like that. Or even knight f2 straight away, some fancy tactics. Well, if I play bishop c2, what would you play? I'm about to play h3 next turn. I'm not convinced. Sorry, I'm not convinced by knight g4. Yeah, Eric, you got it. Please notice, guys, this is important. You can look into fancy tactics, but you can also play like in classical style. So rook e8 is, of course, the right move here. If you cannot find some fancy tactics, probably it's the right moment to just bring out the pieces, you know, like normal stuff. So this move can't be wrong. Rook e8, it cannot be wrong. We're attacking white's main weakness here, or maybe you can say white's main weakness is actually the king. Um, all right, let's continue. That's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, boring, but extremely effective. Uh, I will remind you later about the boring move. You will see how black is helped by this move later on in the game. Okay, white played in the move bishop e3, and it's your turn, okay? It's your turn. Just send me black's best move. It's time to use some tactical uh, ideas, but I didn't say sacrifice, no? Just in case somebody's uh, asking me, I'm, I didn't say that you have to sacrifice. I just, I'm just saying that you should look for, for a smart move here in this, uh, in this position, okay? Here we go. 45 seconds. Find black's... Smartest move. Okay, if you play that, Charles, I'll play. Well, what will I play? Can I play Bishop D4? Maybe Charles and Santos. Uh, I think Bishop D4 is is perhaps possible. Okay, Henry Arsord, you got it. L008, you got it. Mega Charles Rex, I'm considering Bishop D4. Or maybe 95. 95, I'll probably play Charles, Santos, and Mega Charles Rex. So Henry L008. Anyone else? Interesting move, Eric. Uh, does that really work? Wow. Impressive. So if you took on d3, what did you have in mind next? If I take back? Oh, you want to play queen c6, maybe? Yeah, I understand. Aditya, Hong Pao, and awesome Owen. Maybe you can play like that, but. I can assure you that there is a better move. Queen before I will castle short. Take that for granted. I'm, I, I will castle at any moment here. Um, okay, let's listen to Henry Arsord. You were the fastest one. So, what to play with black? Oh, you, you didn't have a microphone? Who, who was it who didn't have a microphone? Yeah, maybe it's Henry Arsord. Okay, yeah, never mind. But try to get that microphone working until next turn, okay? If I take on f5, what happens, uh, Henry Arsord? Exactly, and we win the game. So I'm pretty sure this is the best move to play, bishop f5, but I'm happy to look at other moves also, of course. So some people were saying here, knight g4. I think knight e5 is my best move here. These knights are kind of fighting for the same square. So if one knight leaves, I'll use the other knight. Now be careful with black. You can also lose this game, perhaps. or Well, not really lose the game, but uh, no, no, not at all. Sorry. But OK, I'm still alive in this position. I can perhaps give away this pawn and I'll try to get castled. And who knows? Maybe I can survive here with, with white still. We should always look for the best uh, choice, right? Look for the most powerful way to play. What else did you say here? Um, knight takes, you were saying. Aha. I guess if you said this, you wanted to play queen c6. I cannot understand this in any other way. What about knight e4? Maybe I can play knight e4 first, and then I castle, so as to avoid you from taking this pawn? I'm not convinced, uh, honestly, by this with black. We have this move in the pocket now, so you use it at the right moment. Uh, and also, Eric was saying here a sacrifice. Knight takes e4. How, how was this knight takes e4 sacrifice? Uh, knight c takes e4. That's an incredible move, Eric. Did you really calculate this uh, properly? Let's see here. I take. You take. I take, I guess. So what's, what's the score here right now? I'm going to end up a piece down. No, I don't end up a piece down. I end up the exchange up, don't I? Yeah, this is not so promising, is it, uh, Eric? Is this the best you can get? I don't think so. You can take and... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Something like this. So probably it's it's fine for, for black, but... Uh, 
yeah, or maybe black is even clearly better. I don't know. It's a bit messy, but uh, sure. Interesting idea. Now takes e4. Exchange for only one pawn. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on. I could also take first, perhaps. I don't know. Did you check this, Eric? Did, did you really calculate this? Because I'm not uh, convinced anymore. Uh, I'll take and do. How do you get my queen? I, I don't understand. So probably this is too much. Bishop f5, very pretty move. Uh, those of you who got it, great work. Uh, Adite, I wanted to take. Adite wanted to take with the other knight. Okay, the same question. I'll take back. What do we have now? What What was the plan? I don't follow. Sorry, I don't follow really. Sometimes you get the feeling that you should use all your pieces, right? So here, like in the first example we saw, you remember the move rook c1 after bishop takes d5 and rook c1 to take on c6? Here is the same feeling, no? Let's bring in the bishop and that will make a huge difference, okay? Bishop f5 was playing in the game. We're about to finish off this game. White uh, has no real option here. They played bishop takes e5. Uh, please notice again that if we castle, it's just horrible position for... I mean, I don't even know how... How should we take on e4? So many ways we can take? No, not so many ways, but a few different ways. I guess we'll take with a... Well, how do we take? With the bishop, yeah. Tactical measure says with the bishop, yeah. I, I think that's the correct way, right? I'm exploring. And bishop takes, we take with the knight. But maybe they should have played this then, and then knight e5, don't you think? Maybe this is the better, better way for white to play then. Yeah, why didn't they play like this? Interesting. It seems to me that they would actually survive here by castling. Aha. Uh -huh. There is always like a best option. Uh, maybe you take with a knight then, maybe. Maybe this is the reason why. And then you go back and somehow white has... Yeah, I mean, it's an ugly position, no? Ugly position for white. But still, you're castled. Look what happened in the game. After bishop f5, white played at this point... Um, by the way, maybe we, we should. I should ask you for all these moves just to see if you if you can uh, find them. Yeah, I, I think I will do that. The first moves I want to ask for, of course. So I'll ask for the moves starting from this moment. Okay, let's see who, who can remember correctly all the coming moves here. Let's see. This is a good way to see if you have actually remembered uh, the whole picture here. Let's see if you can remember this. All right. So you will have to find. Um, seven moves, I think. No, oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, it's okay, right? Let's see. All right. I'm sorry, Heavy the Hero, uh, L008. Don't start with Knight A6. Castle first, okay? Castle first. I told you. You can play in both ways, but uh, castle first. Sorry. Okay, Eric, you got it. There might be a difference, you know. If you play knight a6 first, maybe I can play e5. I don't know if it's crazy to play e5, but that might make a difference. So, Eric, Robo, Pikachu, Mega Charles, Rex, Aditea, you all got it. Nice. Hong Pao, you got it as well. Very, very nice. I think it's very nice also the way in which all black pieces participate, no? They are using all their pieces virtually in this, uh, in this attack. Uh -huh. But anyway, if you play knight a6, uh, it's, it's great. It's great. You, you, you got the idea. Okay, awesome, Owen, tactical magician, and Quacky. Good work. Google Chess, you are on the right track. I did Chess on the right track. Subham on the right track. Hank, uh, that knight had another destiny, right? So, I guess we can stop here. All right. So, if you said knight a6, maybe, just maybe, I could play e5. I don't know if this uh, makes a difference. May I talk? Okay, Robo, of course, be my guest. Uh, please talk. Uh, so we have to go back. Okay, to up to which point? We castle. Yeah. And if I you take, I take. Yeah, aha. Okay, you take. I'll play knight f3, I guess. And this should just be better, like even knight a6, rook e8. Yeah, you're confusing me now. Aren't we in the game now? Or you, you mean you could just transpose to the game? That's what you're saying? Yeah, we can even transpose to the game or just play rookie 8. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, let's let's see now. Uh, so you're saying... What did you say? Sorry, I, I lost track here. Uh, you, no. you played castles, right? Yeah. And, and what did I play? Um, no, I mean, I will, I'll play knight f3. Yeah, what happened here? You, you don't want to... Exactly, that's the game. So, so, so what, what was your point? Sorry. 
No, you were saying like if takes pawn takes pawn. Yeah, I mean that's what, what we're looking at. That's exactly no, what. No, early pawn takes pawn, like without knight f3. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you're right. If you if they take, of course you will take back and you can play rook e8 and knight a6, knight c5. Yeah, excellent point, uh, Robo. You're completely right. So let's see if we can uh, wrap this up. Let's continue with the game. Uh, what happened in the game? Well, we had this position, knight a6. Key, key moving. Yeah, you want to, you want to say something more? Sorry? Yeah, I want to. Yeah. You want to play out the moves? Okay, okay. Be my guest. Be my guest. Please continue. Okay, so Robo will show us all the moves here. Okay, please continue. Nice. We prevent White's castles. White played here Queen E2. Bishop E3 is coming up, so we have this nice trick just in case. Rook B1 protecting the pawn, putting more pressure on the pawn on E4. Bishop E3, and finally Bishop because F5. Because if you take, I have Knight D3. Exactly. If take, there is Knight takes D3. So at this point, it seems to me that White should have castled, like we were discussing. But okay, maybe we were missing something, but. Um, I think that was the best choice. In the game instead, okay, I'll, I'll remove the pawn, uh, Robo, because we have a quiz coming up. White took on c5. This is, of course, strategical surrender. White never wanted to give back that bishop. I think in the King's Indian in general, White never wants to swap that bishop for, for a black knight. Queen takes, and White played here the move. Yeah, believe it or not, they played King d2. So it's uh, your move, uh, guys. Uh, let's see here if you can find the best way to continue. There are so many different ways. I think I will just ask you for, um, well, how to do this. I'll ask you just for one move, okay? Just to see if you can feel uh, what this is about. There are different ways to play. Okay, Henry Arsord, you got it. Now try to work out the variation, okay? Uh, Hong Pao, that's a very nice move also. It will definitely transpose to the game. So your move is fine also, Hong Pao, tactical magician. You can play it in that way also, L008. We have different move orders. I told you, with chessable, I can only put one correct variation, so to speak. So Henry Arsot, Mega Charles, Rex, Santos, Adi Chess, Heavy the Hero, Hank, Pikachu, Subham, you all got it. So we could talk to Santos. Okay, Santos, you're on. What would you play with Black here? Knight takes E4. Okay, please go ahead. I think I gave you the pawn, right? Exactly. Knight takes e4, of course, white king in the center. We should try to open up the game. They took with a knight in the game, uh, Santos. What would you play now? What did you calculate? There are different ways. Uh, be sure to, to choose one of them, okay? Now queen b4. Exactly. Now queen b4. That's how they played in the game. And after white's move king d1, what do you think black played? Key move of this game. <laughs> there are different ways and you can execute it. But uh, just uh, choose one, uh, Santos. D5. Exactly. Bravo. That's how the game went. D5. Excellent. Thanks, uh, Santos. Great work. So you can actually carry out this idea in different ways. Some people were saying D5 straight away. And that's perfectly fine because you can just um, change the move order and it will be exactly the same story here you can take and uh, and play queen before or you can even i think you can even just play queen before straight away yeah all uh how is it all roads lead to rome something like that that's what happens here any move order will work as long as we understand that we can play d5 in the end so that's how the game went d5 very nice now black gets back to peace and white king is stranded in the center typical gambit situation when you gambit you can even end up a piece down, but you have a lot of counterplay. A3 was played in the game. Queen A4, B3. Uh, where do you think that queen goes, anyone? What to do with that queen? You can just write in the chat, okay? What to do with that queen? Which is the best place for her? Okay, some people are saying queen c6. Yeah, I guess queen c6 is also possible. Mega Charles Rex, I believe you. That's what they played in the game. Queen d7 looks extremely natural to put the queen on that uh, open file. So white uh, took on d5. In the game, what black did, I think this is very human. In the game, they took on e4, and after bishop takes e4, f5, they had uh, a clear advantage, and they went on to win the game. But there was an even stronger move. I cannot really ask you for this move because it's so obvious. So anyone, what do you think? Black should play here. <laughs> yeah, of course, Eric, you're right. Yeah, this is too obvious. I cannot ask you for this one. Queen takes d5 is the right move. As you can see, now a lot of pressure against the white king. They played in the move knight e5. I'll ask you for the next move because I think it's important. I'll give you only 30 seconds. 
What should black play now? This cannot be difficult. It was difficult for some. <laughs> okay, maybe there are different solutions. Eric, you got it. Adi Chess, you got it. Mega Charles Rex, Sprite Paul. That's the most flexible move. Please understand what I'm saying. Flexibility in the attack. Some moves, we have them in the pocket. Moves like Bishop takes e5, we have them in the pocket. No reason to commit right now. If you have analyzed with Stockfish, for example, you will notice that Stockfish also likes, so to speak, flexibility. They like to keep all doors open. So, uh, Eric, Mega Charles, Rex, Prideful, Adi Chess, Pikachu, and Charles, who are you? Got it. Okay. Um, Adi Chess, what do, would you play with uh, the black pieces here? Which move do you like most? I gave you the pawn, uh, Adi Chess, so please go ahead. Be my guest. Uh, I put Rook 88, like, simply to, like, take uh, take on E4 or take on E5. Sure. Nice. That's what I think, too. It's the most flexible move. We have now several threats. Not easy for White to cope with all those uh, threats. Okay, thanks, uh, Adi Chess. Now, some people are saying that this should also win. Yeah, maybe, but okay, I'll take, and in the first place, I'm threatening knight f6, so you have to take on e5. You cannot take with a rook, no, because I guess I play knight f6. You must take with a with a queen. So maybe this also wins, but I think the other variation is cleaner. Uh, what to play with white here? Do I have any... What would Stockfish play here? <laughs> or would, would Stockfish resign in this position? Maybe there is no way. Some endgame with a pawn down, maybe? Could I produce an endgame with a pawn down? Uh, queen... Queen B2? Or is, is that just losing? I don't know. Could I play like that, guys? Is that possible? Okay, you, you will torture me in that endgame, uh, a pawn up, but... Uh, oh, knight f2. Can you play knight f2? Okay, maybe, maybe. So, I mean, why even bother to, to look at this with the black pieces if you can play in the other way? Much simpler. I mean, put this position to any experienced players and the first move they will say, okay, rook 88, why hurry to take on e5? I can do that later if I like. So, uh, knight, queen takes e2? How is that? Oh, here you mean, queen takes e2. Right, right, you, you win the game. Yeah, 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 you're completely right. That's that's uh, already a decisive advantage. So, I'll stick to my move here, queen b2. I guess I'm lost anyway. But uh, at least I'll try to to confuse black a little, to have this threat. So, probably you'll take on e4 at some moment. Queen takes b2, okay. You'll take on e4, I guess, else you have knight f6 coming up. I'll take back and... Uh, yeah, I guess uh, black is winning in this endgame because, I mean, it's not only the pawn, it's also that my king is is, is a bit uh, badly placed or my rook is not active and so on. Yeah, this looks uh, dreadful for for black, for white, uh, I agree. But but okay, I'll fight on. I mean, what, what will I play here? Rook d2 maybe, I don't know. Try to bring in the rook and, yeah, try to defend. So uh, Instead, rook takes e5 earlier instead of bishop takes. How did you play rook takes e5? At what point? Here? You cannot play it here, right? Or what do you mean, a tactical magician? When? Earlier, okay, but uh, here, rook, rook takes e5. What? Why do we need to, to 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 mix it up so much? Let's see here. What could I play with with white here? Uh, knight somewhere. Knight f2. G4 maybe. What do you think? G4. Could I play like that? Try to swap pieces. I don't follow tactical magician. Rook t8 right now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, this looks also appealing for white. Sure, this looks interesting also. Yeah. Anyway, let's. Uh, I, th I can see the time is running out. Let's uh, continue uh, with the game. Okay. There is a very nice. It's not a game. It's my variation, but it's it's very pretty in the end. So uh, I think you will like it. So rook eighty eight is what we have just explained here uh, by Adiches. Every piece to the party, so to speak. King c two. And now we will have a long, very nice variation. White, I mean, black to play and win. Now it's a long variation. It's time to finish off this game. Uh, try to find a way in which the white king will suffer very much. Okay? Let's take it up to this point. Uh, one minute, 30. No, let's do two minutes. Okay? Two minutes. Try to find a precise way in which you can finish off white here. Take your time, guys. Take your time. Don't rush. Oh, is that possible? To give away the queen? That's very beautiful. Okay. But if I take with the queen... Okay, Eric, you got it. 
What if I take with a queen? Uh, who did, who said this? Tactical magician. Okay, Eric and Robo, you got it. Nice. Let's see if somebody else can find it. Okay. Okay, Rook C8 check. Interesting also. Yeah, definitely. Uh huh. Rook C8, I guess I play King B2 and I hide on A2. Don't you think? I don't see how I'm getting mated there. So, uh, Heavy the Hero, you got it also. Nice. We have three winners on this one. Eric, Robo, and Heavy the Hero. All right. Bishop takes E5. A lot of people are saying pawn takes. And I guess that wins also. But it's not as clean as the other variation, is it? Or maybe. Yeah, maybe. All right, I think the uh, time's up, right? We, we can probably stop here. Most people have sent their moves already. Queen d4 by Hong Pao. Interesting move, Queen d4. Yeah, that's the diagonal on which we want to, to work here. All right, so time's very soon up. Bishop takes e5. That was an interesting move. What would I play? Take and take and some endgame there. Okay, we'll see. Sprite ball, you got it also. Nice, good work. So... Heavy the hero, please uh, go ahead. How does this work? Okay, so rook takes e5. First, he has uh -huh. the pawn. Then queen takes e5. So uh, what, is the, what is the idea here? I'm turning uh, bishop takes e4 and then queen c3 mate. Exactly. And, and uh, I mean, it's perhaps not mate, but it's uh, yeah. definitely very difficult for white. They cannot move this rook. Also, queen v2 is coming up in that case. So I'll try to play here something like uh, rook h1, bringing the pieces to the defense. And then uh, we can still play bishop takes e4 anyway. Yeah, of, of course. Aha. Um, exactly. And we get back the, the material. And yeah, we will lo look at this very soon. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Good work. So let's see here again at this position. Some people are saying, where are we? No, rook d8 and king c2. Some people are saying bishop takes e5. I think this is also good for, it should be enough to win the game like this. I don't know what to play with white here, honestly. It looks horrible. Um, I guess I have to play something like rook e1 and, and just try to defend. So, I mean, you could even take and... Take on e4, and I have to take back. So, so here we are again, right? We have this end game with a uh, pawn up, and uh, of of course, black is much much better and m might win. But is it as clear as the other variation? Not so clear, right? So, um, let's say again, rook c8. When is that, uh, Aditya? When do you want to play rook c8? Here? No. Before. Um... Here you mean rook c8. Then I play king b2. Yeah, but here I play king b2. But then I take queen e5. Okay, with the rook you mean. I'll take back and I'll no, hide my king. with the bishop. Oh, with the bishop. Okay. No problem. You can take with the bishop. I'll take back. You will take. Yeah, I mean, here we are again, right? You can play bishop takes and you end up... Uh... Yeah, you should be winning here. That's true. Yeah, probably that, that's fine also. Yeah, I mean, what, what can I play here? I have to play something like this. It's, it's tragical to play like this because I have the most passive king in... The history of endgames. But okay, what, what to do? This is what I will have to play and suffer, right? Uh, so it's it's okay. If you like uh, this kind of endgame, it's fine, no? You will probably win here without too much effort. But I think it's cl cleaner the variation that uh, we were looking at here with uh, rook takes e5. I think that's a cleaner way to play. I don't know if there is any, any other move that you want to, to look at, else just let's just continue. Uh, pawn takes, queen takes, like... We had explained here by, I think it was Heavy the Hero who explained this. Rook e1 and bishop takes, queen takes, queen c3, king d1 and rook takes c3. Okay, by now we can already feel that uh, we're about to win this game. But still, we have to be a little precise. So your last challenge for today is to see if you can get the moves in the right order here. This is just a matter of, um, how can I say, technique to be precise in the calculation. So... This is the last mission for you guys. You get 1 minute and 30 seconds for this mission, okay? Black to play and win. Careful with, uh, I think it's move number two. Very careful. Think about my defensive options also, okay? Take your time, take your time. Look carefully. 
That's why I said take your time, uh, Adi says. Take your time. Don't rush. I can defend her, you know. Think about what uh, White can do for uh, defensive uh, means here. I'm sorry, Subham. I don't think that's the right way to go. Okay, Eric, you got it. That's correct. I think there is only one way. Adi Chess, Subham, and Aditya, you did it too quickly. You need to spend some more time looking at uh, the defensive options for your opponent. Okay, Heavy the Hero, good work. Robo, L008, Tactical Magician, Henry R. Sword. All of you, you got it. That's great. We had like three candidate moves, um, three different checks. We had to pick the right check. There is one check which makes a huge difference, as you have noticed. Hong Pao, you got it also. Nice. So if you picked some other check, I'm afraid it's no longer the same thing. Mega Charles Rex, I'll take that rook. I'll take that rook. I'm sorry. Santos, good work. You got it as well. Quacky, you got it. Sprite Paul, very nice. A lot of people found it. That's uh, excellent. So let's see here if we pick somebody who, who hasn't uh, talked today. Uh, I think uh, Quacky didn't uh, speak today. Okay, Quacky, you're on. What would you play with black here? Which of these uh, three checks do you like the most? You can just play out the move. I gave you the pawn. All right. No answer from uh, Quoki. So let's speak to, to Pikachu. Okay, Pikachu, what do you play with black here? Which of these three checks do you like the most? Exactly. So what's the difference here? Could you explain this with words or uh, it's uh, difficult? Okay, so I want to play Quinty 2. Okay, so yeah, after Quinty 2, Quinty 2, uh, he will play queen, King F1. And you need your bishop into attack because you can't play something like Rook D2 because then he will trade and he, and he, and he Sure, he, sure, of, so of course. So you play something like Bishop D4. Exactly. And so here, the thing is, if your queen was on D2, he would play Queen E2 right now. Oh, actually, no, that wouldn't work because then he went Queen F4. No, I, I see what you mean. If it was if like this... You... Play, no, uh, he, he wouldn't He wouldn't e2. play Queen E2. Okay. Exactly. You play Rook E2, yeah. right? And, and yeah, and, and black. Uh, I mean, white survives. But right? if you have a queen on c2. You cannot play rook e2 because then you exactly. In the corner. You're right. That's exactly what this is about. I cannot play rook e2 because the rook is hanging. That's why we have to put the queen on on c2, right? So uh, in the game, uh, I mean, in my variation, they play queen e2, and uh, you have to play the last move here, Pikachu, of this uh, uh, var variation. Yeah, not difficult. Exactly. So this is how this picture ends. Rook e2, and as you can see. No way in which white can uh, prevent rook f2. They can give check if they like, but it, there is no big difference from that. So finally, black wins their exchange down here for one pawn. But uh, yeah, they're completely winning thanks to their great activity. So that's basically how these gambits uh, work. As you can see, black gave a pawn, then they gave up a piece. I think they were even a rook down at some moment, but they have a very strong attack and they never let white castle. I think that's uh, it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for joining in and see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.